Hi, my name is Lance Brooks, and this is a tale of two communities. The city of Canada Bay in Sydney is where I live with my family. For most people, it's an easy, comfortable life. And it's a great place for kids to grow up and be educated. The other community is thousands of kilometres away in Thailand, a place called Granong on the border with Burma. To get there, you fly into bustling Bangkok. Renong is an eight hour drive southwest, or you can fly there in an hour. In September 2002, I travelled to Renong with Margaret McCafferty and Sarah Condon, who work for the development and aid agency Caritas. Through Caritas, Canada Bay has formed a partnership with the Renong community to help educate hundreds of children. It's a project we've called Communities for Communities. Caritas Australia has been working with the Jesuit Refugee Service in programs along the Thai border for quite a number of years. There are some 130,000 Burmese refugees in camps along the border. JRS at the end of last year told us about a new initiative they had in Renong where there were mostly uh, fishing families who had come across and had settled here. Uh, but were really living in quite appalling conditions and the children lacked any access to education and that this was a program that JRS was uh, interested in pursuing. Lance contacted us early this year and said that he was interested in bringing communities together uh, to support communities overseas. And for us that was a very interesting concept and we were really delighted to be part of that and to in some way facilitate this connection between the local community of Canada Bay and the community here in Renong. This is my first visit to Renong. The first stop is the Lotus Pond School, which is one of the schools our community of Canada Bay supports. Walking up to the school, the conditions were extremely poor. We walked through mud all the way, and the buildings were generally run down. I suppose I was nervous, and there was certainly a sense of trepidation. I was not sure what to expect. Yes. Hello. Lance. Hey. Hello, eh? But the first glimpse through the front door of that tiny school was unbelievable. Good morning. And thank you. So you may sit down. To see this group of children all in their uniforms, it was almost like an oasis amongst everything else. In a room no more than four metres by four metres, there were nearly 60 children and their teacher. It was wonderful to see their enthusiasm for learning and their desire to be there. Can you ask the children for me, do they like coming to school? Don't light up your life. Oh, that's very enthusiastic, yes. <laughs> that's good. Have they ever have seen a kangaroo? <laughs> okay, he, here's the actual beginnings of the school, uh, the first classroom for the Lotus School. Um, the teacher lived in here, she opened up her house and she started with 12 children. 
from there, they moved on to this building here, and now they have that 58 children in the space that we, we saw, which is incredible. Um, with their assistance, um, they're moving into another building next door, which is twice the size of they again now. And, uh, their students should be able to improve the numbers from um, 58, which is in the classroom now, to 76. All the children's families are Burmese who've sought refuge in Thailand. They've come to Renong by fishing boat. Mums and dads look for whatever work they can find around Renong City. Many people get work in the fishing industry, but really have a tough time scraping together enough money to feed and clothe their families, let alone educate their children. 90% of the workers here are uh, Burmese migrant workers that uh, they make a living here in Ranao, Thailand. And most of the school children parents work here. Uh, some of them they work uh, as uh, uh, selling the fish. We were invited to visit a family whose children attend the Lotus Pond School. They worked and lived in a fish factory. And as we were to discover, this was one of the better off families. We walked through the back of the factory. There was a row of about six different rooms, each occupied by a different family. Six people lived in a space probably no more than three metres by three metres. Everything they owned was stored in that room. Could you ask how they feel about having the ability to send their children to school? They don't want that. 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 For their children to get access to the education in this Lotus school. And could Shrizen tell us about the makeup? Oh. She said, uh, since she knows that you all are coming, so she makes herself a presentable for you all by putting this uh, Burmese natural makeup. Tell her it looks very beautiful. Are you ready? You ready? One. Ah, very nice. <laughs> Some of the children live right next door to the Lotus Pond School. Each family has a reason for leaving Burma, and it's often a dramatic one. Many of them have had uh, friends, family killed. Uh, many of them have also suffered at the hands of the government troops. Many of them have endured extreme hardship. Uh, the income that they receive per day uh, is nowhere near enough to provide for the food that they require for the day. We spoke to the people who now live in the room that used to be the first Lotus Pond School and we heard an extraordinary account of what it means to be a refugee. There was a grandmother there, and I say grandmother, but she probably wasn't much older than 45. That morning, uh, in the early hours of the morning, her daughter ha had come across with her three children in a boat, in a Burmese fishing boat. Uh, the board at the moment's uh, closed and it's a very dangerous journey. And they knew her daughter was coming across that night and there'd been a little bit of a misunderstanding about whereabouts they were landing. And so they were fretful all night. They, they, missed, they missed them basically. And she said she was in despair and just weeping. Subsequently she found her daughter and 
there was, you know, obviously a great joyful reunion there. And that morning was the first time that family had been together for three years. It was the first time she'd seen two of her grandchildren. Then we sat in that room and the daughter, she fed her three children. And, you know, it was the first time one of them had eaten an egg. You know, they're basically in Burma, they're just lacking food. And that's why they have to leave, they just can't feed their families. It's difficult when you look at the plight of these people to know where to start. Uh, there are so many ways that one could assist. And I suppose one of the priorities for ourselves as Caritas Australia is to support the children and to support the children in their education. Through Caritas and the Jesuit Refugee Service, we're supporting five schools. This one's called the Victoria School. It was started by the people themselves, and now with our help, it's educating 110 children. This is his daughter. Every day, the principal ferries students to and from school in his homemade sidecar bus, even when it rains. And that can be every day for eight months straight. The Soy Summer Key School educates 71 children. The teacher has long-term health problems, but he comes to school regardless of how he feels, because the community depends on him. One of our aims is to provide a teaching assistant to lessen his workload. We've just arrived here now at um, a new school that's about to open, actually next week. It's a bit of a shame, we've just missed the start of it. It'll be called Renong Tani School, and that's basically Renong City School. Um, this is a direct result of our involvement you know, from Communities for Communities and basically they expect about 100 children to be uh, in this school. Uh, there'll be a teacher and a teacher's aide um, and that's what they'll start with. It'll be divided into two areas in this front part. Um, there'll probably be about 60 children, believe it or not, um, with benches and everything. And then just down behind this wall here, In here they'll have some of the younger children and there'll probably be 30 or 40 in here for teacher's aid. The smallest little thing just has such a big impact and is so gratefully um, received. And um, I mean, anything you do is, is going to improve the lives of these little children, mm. you know, who have almost nothing. So, you know, the generosity of your communities is, um, I mean, it's overwhelming for us, and it's it's even more overwhelming for the people down in Renong. A lot of you actually watched a, fair, a reasonable number of the shows, so you got a bit of an idea what it looked like, and you know how the game. Goes. Communities for Communities was an idea that came to me when I was a participant on the TV program Survivor. It was an idea I never expected. It just grew out of the experience. And on the third day, we actually caught our first little fish. And we, hadn't, we didn't have any fire, so we actually, actually ate a raw fish. Now, you wouldn't think you could do that, would you? If I could bottle a sense of appreciation for the simple things, just, just for the things I had, I'd go back a much, much, much happier person. So we started, came up with an idea called Communities for Communities. And Communities for Communities is very much about our community enjoying itself.
It's about enjoying our own community and having fun. The other part of it is about creating an awareness of the concept of reaching out to another culture, another community, and enriching both in the process. Amazing experiences for me is how people of all ages have come together to support communities for communities. They've offered their enthusiasm, passion, skills and time and helped create a new spirit of community in the process. We left Canada Bay with educational, cultural and sporting gifts from our local schools to share with the community in Renong. Handing them out was one of the highlights of our time there. On a steamy Sunday afternoon, we met with the Lotus Pond School parents to thank them for being part of Communities for Communities. And, and to basically um, thank you for being part of what we want to do um, and be involved with your community. So, so what we did, we got together um, and we came together as friends in our community and we decided that we'd like to be involved with um, educating some children and being involved with a school. So we got together and we started to raise some money. The Communities for Communities program has offered me and our community in Canada Bay a unique opportunity to better understand the life of the Burmese people in Renong. Some of their stories, some of the hardships, some of the fear. I've never experienced that. It touched me in a way that I didn't expect. When we stood at the door and looked in at the children uh, and they were learning and they were happy and they were listening, and, and A was teaching them, um, I, felt, I felt wonderful to be part of it and to witness that. He said that they are very happy because they said they cannot afford their children to send to school in Burma, but now they have an opportunity to be, uh, for their children to be able to attend to the school. So they're really grateful and they really don't know how to express the feeling that, you know, the joyful feeling that they have. Mm -hmm. So they really thank you all for being here with them. Tell them um, that, that uh, thankfulness is expressed in their children's <coughs> happiness, it shows, and in their faces. <laughs> uh, just to share, uh, that mission with them about trying to provide education um, and an opportunity for hope for their children for the future is, you know, um, I think it's an honour from our point of view. For me, it's been an extraordinary journey to Renault. In a place that's struggling with difficult issues, there was a meeting of hearts and minds, and we'd all become richer for that experience. But it's a journey that's just begun. In the months and the years ahead, we hope to build on what we've already achieved for both communities, building solidarity across borders. 
already another bigger dream has emerged. Our goal is to share this model with other Australians who have a like-minded desire to help build a new spirit in their towns and cities by reaching out and helping another community meet its needs.